Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. I know, a Duel Links episode, or video, what, why? Well, there's a huge Forbidden and Limited list update that has just happened because more recently there has been the KC Cup that has been dominated primarily by the first offender here on this list, Salomon Great. Salomon Great has been a tier zero deck in competitive formats for a while, like since release, um, which honestly hasn't been all that long, but it has been uh, pretty dominant and basically everyone knows that it needs to get nerfed. So it being nerfed is not that big of a surprise. However, let's get on to the rest of this list that I have already looked at and I want to talk about the implications and the fact that I'm I'm probably still not going to be playing this deck, this ha or this uh, game. This game has so many issues, but I do think that this is a interesting step in the right direction. So let's quickly go over the list. First and foremost, we have, um, I do want to mention, limited to one cards. You can only have one limited one card in your deck, period. Meaning, Monster Reborn, which is currently limited to one, cannot be played with the newly limited Salomon Great Gazelle. Meaning you can have either Monster Reborn or... Salomon Great Gazelle, not both. This is highly influential because Salomon Great Roar is also now limited to one. Why is this the case? Well, it a lot of times the ability to go Gazelle into Dump Roar, into grabbing your relinked Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf, into adding back the Roar to then allow you to have that Omni Negate with any other potential disruptions was a little bit too much. And I think Konami wants to rein in the power level of Salomon Great. However, this is like the main reason, if not the only reason, to realistically play Salomon Great. The ability to have a recursive Roar and having access to it through Gazelle. This deck is entirely new, and these two cards are only available at one because they are both level up rewards uh, from Soulburner. I think they're both level up rewards. And so you can only get one of them anyway. So now these are both limited to one, meaning even though you only could see one, now you can only see one or the other. This is interesting. I'm not a big fan of it, but I understand the take. I think limiting things like Jack Jaguar or what other, uh, some other cards, maybe putting um, something like Salomon Great Circle to one along with the Gazelle, or maybe not Circle, but like something along those lines would have been a good option as well. I think this kind of kills the reason to play the deck, um, which is that constant recursion. You can either play Gazelle and have an actual like game plan with consistency and stuff like that, being able to dump Jack Jaguar or a Falco or what have you, but you not re you're not really able to end on any sort of disruption guaranteed, or you can add Roar and have a potential coin flip that is way worse for you with a lower consistency, but not really have as much overall power. Not exactly a big fan of that, but Sure. And with the power level of the game being increased, which I do like, it's still not great to see such huge hits. Moving on, we have the next one. Enemy Controller also puts 2-1. Enemy Controller is an absolutely insane card, and it paired so brilliantly with specifically Salomon Great. Putting this to 1 does make sense. You're able to tribute off a monster to steal an opponent's monster, which is twofold absolutely insane in a metagame where you have 4,000 life points and you can pretty easily obtain lethal extremely easily due to this card. You take away an opponent's monster and gain their attack points. You only need the one turn. OTKing is incredibly easy. You kill your opponent. Pretty simple. Understandable limitation. Head judging is at one for some reason. I really couldn't tell you why this card is on here. Uh, I did take a look at the top 100 list and I still can't really fathom why this is here at one. Um, honestly, head judging is a problematic card and is just kind of a coin flip to win card in Duel Links, so I don't mind it. In all honesty, it probably should have just been banned, but I do understand limiting it to one altogether. And then, of course, finally, a bigger limitation to Treacherous Trap Hole. I have been calling for this card to be banned ever since, like, 2018, in Duel Links, this card is absolutely problematic in Duel Links, where basically two pops is 
an entire field. You can get two boss monsters out, which could in theoretically end the game. You flip up one treacherous trap hole, which has very little limitations in a game of 20 cards, and just entirely wipe your opponent's field. There are very few cards that can play around this, and there are very few cards that can help you to defend against it. Sure, there are things like MST that could potentially save you from this, but in all honesty, if you don't have MST, or you don't have Cosmic Cyclone, or one of those various cards, and you just get two monsters on the field, boom, you're dead. And this is such a huge blowout card that hitting this to one is nice, but it's still not a ban, just ban the card. It's that big of a problem, just ban it. We saw what happened with Hatrunade, just, just ban the card. It's, it's truly the problem. Moving on, we have probably one of the biggest buffs we've had in a really long time, Dark Lord Ixchel going to one. Now, a lot of TCG players will say, well, it's going from two to one, why is this big? Currently, both Dark Lord Contact as well as Dark Lord, the Sanctified Dark Lord are currently at two, meaning you can only play two copies of those cards, uh, of the limited two cards. So, if I have Ixchel at two and Contact at two and Sanctified at two, I can choose any two of those in any combination of two. So I can have a contact and an eggshell, but then I wouldn't have sanctified, which is the only real trap that's available for the Dark Lord archetype. There is no rebellion, there is no in, um, uprising, and there's no the, the other one. Uh, also, first Dark Lord doesn't exist. So there's that. Um, so Dark Lord eggshell going to one means that you can now play one contact, one Sanctified, and one Ixchel, all available. Now, however, this does take away the option to play uh, Monster Reborn if you want to play the Ixchel, which means that you don't have as many opportunities to special summon from the grave, but drawing two is pretty nice overall and allows you access to the uh, Banishment of the Dark Lord to search more cards. Dark Lords were also basically tier zero, like twice. Uh, they are the more or less like dad or dragon rulers of dual links they're a deck that just kind of didn't die for, for like ever um, i guess dragon rulers is a better example um so there you go that's a great way to think about it moving on we have world legacy whispers which was a newly released card for the world legacy or uh the mech knights that had recently come out when this card is activated you could target a level five or higher monster on the field it gains a thousand attack and defense until the end of this turn negate any opponent's spell effects that activate in the same column as a mech knight monster you control now the reason that this one is particularly limited is because it is a hit to the world legacy stuff while preventing them from playing cards like the treacherous the head judging and the econ which are newly limited to one while also still allowing them access to that because none of the other cards happen to be limited to one so the new mech knights and world legacy stuff are still able to be played but the main power card negating spell effects which there aren't really a whole lot of negate effects in dual links is now limited um so yeah pretty nice next up we have lady debug being limited to two this is again a hit to salomon great in salomon great this card is normally just played at two so it's not too big of a hit compared to the gazelle and the roar but again with the limitations of the gazelle and the roar having debug just stopped like that is pretty annoying um this i i don't know what all is currently semi-limited that would change how you would play with lady debug and like if you would cut this card because again most of the time you would not play that card to play things like treacherous or econ or something along those lines but now it's just world legacy clash i guess which is nice but most people weren't playing that card anyway um so in all honesty i don't see Le lady debug really changing too much i think some people played this card at three some people played it at one so it's i i think this is a good i i honestly don't know what this is doing um this could be unlimited and i don't know how much would change i guess it gets you better access to gazelle but again gazelle was already at one so i don't really see the implication for that uh, again, I think most people were playing it at two or three copies, maybe. So a little bit more inconsistent, I guess. Next up, we have limited to three. So this one is unique to Dual Links, where there are cards that you can only have three of limited three cards in the deck. Now, notably, right now, 
Uh, Cosmic Cyclone is the big boy that is limited to three, meaning you can't play Cosmic Cyclone at three copies if you want to play something else. I guess the other one that is notable is, um, is Battling Boxer Veil, which allows you to, uh, hand traps work a little bit different in Duel Links. You basically are mostly doing battle tricks with the hand traps. So things like Sphere Karibo, Kite Roid, and Battling Boxer Veil are all ways to survive combat. Um, and so Battling Boxer Veil is also limited to three to limit other such options. Salomon Great Circle is now limited to, limited to three. I don't really understand this limitation as well. I don't really know what is being hit here that would change a top deck. Um, but hey, okay, and now you can't play it with Cosmic Cyclone. Instead, you have to play it with MST. So there's that. Moving on, we have Inishi, which was part of a tier zero format with the six samurai cards. Moving from limited to two to limited to three, along with Shien's Dojo. This allows for you to play multiple copies of either of these, but you are not able to play all three of each of these because now they are both on the limited to three list, meaning you can play two Inishi and one Shien's Dojin or Dojo, uh, or the other way around, two Shien's Dojo and one Inishi. Um, so this is a nice boost to the six Samurai strat, which has been very bad as of late. Sure, it was tier zero, but in like 2016, it really wasn't that powerful back then um, in terms of like overall power level of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, like that whole strategy wasn't great. But sure, in Duel Links, it was tier zero, so it doesn't make sense as to why it was limited, limited and now it could definitely come back and we'd be fine. But yeah, small steps. Cards to be unlimited. Oh, you know that thing I just said about Cosmic Cyclone? I didn't actually see all the all the way to this point. But Cosmic Cyclone is now unlimited. Why is this the case? I don't know. Why is now Salem Great Circle limited to three? I don't know. I really couldn't tell you. Uh, I don't play this game enough. But sure, Cosmic Cyclone comes off of the list. This was mostly on the list due to the fact that it activated, like, Alistair, the Invoker skills. That was mostly it. And Alistair and the Invoker was put on the limited to three list and so cosmic cyclone was there and some other cards were kind of there as well but this is basically a great way to proc skills since a lot of the skills used to require you to pay a thousand life points and so you'd go cosmic cyclone a back row pay a thousand life points activate your skill and now you're off to the races happy day however nowadays skills are very different and now it's not a thousand life points it's normally deck requirements like for example the red rose archetype requires you to have a specific amount of rose dragons or extra deck monsters that are rose dragons in order to play the skill so oftentimes it's just building the deck correctly and then you can utilize the skill which i honestly hate it's one of the mechanics that makes me want to pull my hair out and makes me really stop playing this game i just can't fathom it it's terrible. But Cosmic Cyclone is now unlimited, which is great. That means skills that cost a certain amount of life points or what have you are hopefully on the rise. But let's be honest, they won't be. Moving on, we have Invocation, which is now unlimited as well. Invocation was recently at three or at, yeah, the limit three section because of Alistair the Invoker. Alistair the Invoker was absolutely crazy. So the fact that it was limited in some capacity was... Uh, because of Alistair the Invoker. However, with Alistair the Invoker, I guess coming off of the list because this card is now off, um, I'm very confused. I'm guessing that they put Salomon Great Circle on the limited list to prevent people from just playing Alistair Salomon Great stuff, but also you unlimited invocation. So, like, I, I don't know. I, also, who would play Salomon Great Invoker? Sure, I guess, because Purgatrio allows you to OTK more effectively. But, like, Alistair's still good. I guess not in the current meta. I don't know. This is a weird one. I, I don't know how I feel about this, but we'll see. Next up, we have the Phantom Knights. Uh, Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves. Uh, Phantom Knights were pretty decent. They were like tier one for a while. Nothing too overly impactful. They weren't like the best deck by far. They were definitely decks that com could compete with them, but they were limited in some capacity. And as you can see, 
they've been unlimited. I think this is mostly just increasing the overall power ceiling of the of, of a lot of decks that are currently on the limited list. Like for example, the Invocation coming off, the Ixshell coming off, um, and stuff like that. Just to increase the power level of the game, which I do like overall. Mage Lanica was also limited to two to prevent things like the Treacherous Trap Hole and the like, um, because Mage Lanica is a core piece of the Invoked Archetype, because it's just big. 3,000 attack points is big, and you could go 3,000 attack points if your opponent has a clear field, drop your Alistair the Invoker to boost it to 4,000, and boom, that's lethal. So, oftentimes that happened. Um, this is unlimited now, sure. Gaga Ga Head now is unlimited. The reason for this is because uh, previously it was limited to two to uh, prevent onomats from being as powerful as they were. Uh, this card was played at three because it just says a normal summon it and then you get two monsters back and then you could go into a six or you could go into a, a four or you could go into a myriad of different things and it was just very, very problematic for the overall metagame because of the current Xyz that were available. However, those Xyz are now pretty okay, but still not great. And more importantly, the skill that automats used to be tier zero are now not good. It's just not nearly as good. Um, so yeah, Gagara Head could definitely come off of the list and be totally fine. Shiranui Squire is a, a very interesting one. Shiranui's still do the same thing that they used to previously, which is just control the game. And then with Shiranui Squire being able to access a level six synchro while having three back row is still pretty strong. However, Honestly, the main power level of the deck came from the fact that it was able to more easily compete against a metagame utilizing trap cards and then just going into this, which is literally what Salamangrate did. So, I don't know how I feel about this one. Um, Salamangrate literally made themselves the best deck by sitting behind three back row and, like, a small monster, and that is literally what Shiranui does. And not only did they get Squire, they also got Spirit Master, entirely unlimited. This is problematic. <laughs> I'm not sure I like this, because this means Shiranui might be the best deck again. Um, yeah, that's it. I just there is a chance that Shiranui just becomes the best. They could do absolutely nothing. This could be a nothing change, or this could be the change that they needed to make themselves top tier once again. There are still even better and better trap cards available, and with the unlimits of these cards, with things like Crackdown and Compulse being available, we can now run three copies of either Crackdown or Compulse to make Shiranui even better, and yeah, you start to see the issues. And then next up, we have a Necroz Valkyrus. Uh, this card was limited as a pre-hit to Necroz when Necroz originally came to Duel Links, and... Um, I don't know why. Necroz never really did anything. It's missing Clausulus. It's missing Jin. It's missing a whole bunch of other cards that really do make Necroz or made Necroz like tier zero in the TCG. And so now we're just still getting Valkyrus back because they realized, oh yeah, it's actually not that bad. And like, this is a whole game plan behind Necroz, like stopping your opponent and then actually having plays. Thanks, Konami. Um, this is great for me. I love Necroz. Necroz is like one of the decks that I actually enjoy playing, so yay. Hooray. Next up we have Gen X Controller, which was limited because of Christrons, not because of Gen X. I, I know, crazy. But you could go Gen X Un D Undyne into dumping a water Christron monster in order to add the Gen X Controller to your hand. This putting this to the limited two spot, along with a bunch of the other Christron cards, meant that you weren't able to play the Undyne with multiple copies of this, or more importantly, you weren't able to play the Undyne with copies of the tuners from Christrons or some of the traps or what have you that were wildly important in that strategy. However, Christrons are fine. Realistically, they could probably, eh, not all of them, uh, they'd still be overpowered if everything was unlimited, but the fact that the Undyne stuff is making it more consistent, um, you can, yeah, now have it come off of the list and it'd be fine. So that's what they're doing. Again, bringing the power level up overall. So here are all of the changes. As you can see here, lots of limitations here to the uh, to, to a bunch of mostly power cards, notably these three that are um, now limited from from semi. I think all of these were semi. Um, 
And then we have the debug as well as all of these limitations and then a whole bunch of unlimits. All in all, I, I can't say that I hate this list, but this is something that is very big and it's like one of the biggest ban lists in history of Matt of of uh of dual links and it is increasing the power level of the decks overall by a bit but i don't know how this will overall affect things um Automats are still dead because their skill was absolutely slaughtered. Phantom Knights are probably playable at some point. Necroz was never really going to be good, so the unlimited there is pretty mediocre. Invocation being unlimited along with Cosmic Cyclone could potentially add some life into the invoked archetype, but in all honesty, I don't really see them doing too well. I, I mean... Purgatrio is still good, so maybe, who knows? And with the meta being more or less unsolved due to the insane limitations that Salomon Great has hit, um, due to the fact that most of their cards that they were playing are now dealt with, um, as well as the huge limitations to Gazelle and Roar, means that, yeah, you're probably not going to see that deck as much, um, and it will definitely be pushed down in the meta, so Invoked may have a chance to come back, um, Six Samurai probably still isn't doing anything. Shien pass isn't really enough. Sure, Anishi's good, but th the fact of the matter is you have to get two Six Samurai monsters into your graveyard in order to target a face-up monster, which a lot of decks can play through, just the one bounce as well as the one Omni or the one spell trap negate. Um, sure, it could be annoying, but still a lot of decks can do that because skills are absolutely broken, so there's that. And then, of course, we have the... Most interesting of the unhits, that being the Sam, uh, Shiranui uh, unlimits, which is Squire, the main playmaker, and Spirit Master, the main way to disrupt. So combo Shiranui is probably still on the table and something that you could definitely play, as well as you could play the control Shiranui, and it would also still work. I don't know why they unlimited both the Squire and the Spirit Master while also still limiting or unlimiting a lot of the other problematic cards that were, you know, at three. Or, or I should say, while still having access to all of those cards that are currently at three, most notably Crackdown and Compulse, but alas, they decided to do that. I mean, yes, Shiranui, um, the other one, Solitaire is still at two, which is nice, along with, I think the other one, no, no, the other one is unlimited, the Synchro Monster is unlimited, so Shiranui is basically at full power, which is... Not a good idea, given the power level has been decreased overall from the top decks, with the Salomon Great being unlimited, or, uh, limited. So, I don't know. We could just have another Shiranui meta. Who knows? Dark Lords, on the other hand, they're not going anywhere. They're gonna stay at rogue tier at best. I think the one Dark Lord Eggshell is nice, but it's not really enough. You still only have access to one contact, you still only have access to one trap card, and you only have access to one Eggshell. There isn't really a supplementary archetype that is going to help you as well, seeing as how there just isn't enough going on, and the power level of the game has moved up, and the skills in particular are way more important nowadays than they were previously, and Dark Lords don't have a skill that hasn't been nerfed into absolute oblivion because of the touching of said skill with Dark Lords. Um, yeah, basically every skill that Dark Lords have used has been absolutely gutted, so I don't see a big change up with that. So all in all, this ban list is interesting and could potentially throw us into a meta that we have already seen with Shiranui and Invoked being the best decks. Because what the hell were they thinking? Or this could do absolutely nothing, Salomon Great still best deck, and there are just some different deck ideas that we have to play around. Mech Knights could actually see meta relevant play, which is something that no one has ever thought they'd hear. And then we also could see Infernoid being one of the best at decks as well, which, no, we've heard that one before. Anyway, that's going to be it for this weird video. Um, I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy. If you did, a like is very much appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. However, if you want to see Duel Links, don't. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. And uh, remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.